Back, you beasts! Back! Being a witcher means walking a path filled with monsters and magic, but is there a way to make a Geralt of Rivia for real? Let's get technical. Back! Gary? Jeez, I said, come on. From the book and video game series of the same name, a witcher is a professional monster hunter, trained to be incredibly proficient in combat and mutated to have all the physical traits necessary to bring in supernatural bounties. I have spent a lot of time with the Witcher games, so I think it's finally time to figure out how, in a world of hard fantasy, you could make a Witcher in real life. Yeah, that only took a few hundred hours. First, what I love about Witcher lore is that although we are in a world of spirits and magic, there is a reason, there are explanations for everything happening, unlike explanations for how Superman flies or how the Force works, adorable though it may be. It's explained why our protagonist has the abilities that he does, what they can do, and where he got them. And we will start with maybe his most striking feature cat eyes that allow him to see in the deepest caves and with perfect clarity on the darkest nights. Cat-like eyes would be a seriously useful biological modification. In cats, this ocular occurrence boosts low light sensitivity by almost 50%. This allows felines to render images from light that is imperceptible to humans, and they do this with what's called a tapedum lucidum. Oh, Novagraph! Okay. Many animals have a tapedum lucidum. It's just a fancy name for a very thin piece of reflective tissue that sits inside of the eye, but behind the retina. Now, when I first learned about this structure, I just naively assumed how it worked. I thought that light rays would enter the cat's eye and then bounce off the tapedum and then get all over the place and hit the retina more and therefore just bestow night vision. But no, there is much cooler physics going on. The tapedum lucidum is what's called a retro reflector, which is any device that takes incoming rays or radiation and reflects them back towards the source. In a cat's eye, here's what happens. So incoming light passes into the cat's eye, crosses the retina, and then bounces off of the tapedum. But instead of scattering the light just any which way, which I naively thought would happen, it instead reflects it back across the retina in the same orientation, therefore enhancing the image through constructive interference. This specific reflectivity is also why when it's very dark and you shine a light at a cat's eyes, they appear to shine so much. Now I just have to find my way out of Oh, Tris Marigold, my shins! Humans lack a tapedum lucidum, so suddenly developing them would require a radical tissue transformation. At least witchers do go through a whole body metamorphosis like this during their so-called trial of the grasses, and that adds a hint of plausibility here. Retro-reflecting eyes would gift Geralt and other witchers an edge in low-light conditions, giving their eyes a second chance to observe monsters hiding in the darkness. <sighs> a witcher actually has to fight monsters once they find them, and so that means we're gonna be messing around with Geralt's genes. Ah, that feels... Ah, top spiders! To keep up with Bruxa and the rest of the bestiary, witchers are... Witchers are treated with various mutagens, which is a real term for anything that can cause mutations in your cells, your DNA, your genes. Your body is an incomprehensibly complicated machine, and so most of the time, mutations, changes to this delicate machine, are going to be harmful, and accordingly, most witchers treated with mutagens do not survive the process, but those that do become superhuman. Inside of the DNA in one of your chromosomes right now sits the MSTN gene, which produces the chemical known as myostatin, which helps regulate muscle growth. As we've talked about on a previous episode of this program, a mutation to this gene can therefore lead to changes in the expression of myostatin, a lack of myostatin even, and this can lead to unregulated muscle growth, which leads to some abnormally buff boys. I mean, just look at these ripped cows and muscle mice and buff dogs and 
thick sheep. A mutagen could therefore possibly mutate a witcher in a similar way, which would increase muscle mass and strength, lower body fat and... It... I gotta, I gotta put something away real quick. Don't, just want, don't worry about it. Witchers lacking in myostatin might be crazy strong, but strength isn't everything. Huh? When tracking cockatrices across a continent, ah, huh? that's why witchers also need superhuman endurance. When we talk about mutations, doing something to you or to a witcher, what we specifically mean is changing DNA to change the chemicals that are either produced or not produced inside of the body. And for monster slaying stamina, we might look to the kidney. There, the EPO gene produces a chemical that encourages the production of red, uh, red blood cells. Sorry, I'm just a little tired. I'm just gonna meditate for a bit. Just, I'll see you in a... Oh, sorry, that must have looked really weird to you. What side quest were we on? Red blood cells? Oh, yeah, all right. Right now, inside of your circulatory system, your lungs are transferring oxygen into your red blood cells. The oxygen binds to a molecule known as hemoglobin, and then those red blood cells and that hemoglobin go throughout the body and then deliver oxygen to all of your tissues that need it. This process is especially important for hardworking muscles. In theory, then, more red blood cells flowing throughout your body would mean more oxygen delivery and better performance for your muscles when you're swinging silver swords around. If a witcher was mutated to produce more EPO protein and therefore produce more red blood cells than the average human, they might get the stamina they need to face down all of the world's horrors. We know that it would at least do something because right now in our world, humans are abusing EPO protein to get an edge in sport with blood doping. Dang! Greg, come on, man! Super strength and cat eyes are great, but a witcher won't last very long unless their bodies can handle all the damage that they're dished out. Does it look cool at least? Witchers can heal damage like cuts, burns, and bruises extremely quickly. They have to. Your genes, of course, play a role in regulating the repair and replacement of your body. And so, witcher mutagens could feasibly make a swipe from some spirit, much less of a death sentence. Ow! It's, come on. As we've gone through before on this program when talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, wound healing is one of the most complex things that your body does. And so a simple mutation, like a single mutation, is unlikely to produce witcher-like healing. However, there are a number of different growth factors, chemicals, proteins, like vascular endothelial growth factor that a witcher's mutated cells could produce more of to accelerate their own healing in response to some Damage. Ah, the healing won't be perfect, but scars are cool, right? <sighs> Mastering magic and silver swords in a library's worth of monster facts takes time, and so the final Witcher trait that separates them from society is their lifespan. In the books and games, Geralt appears to be around 40, but in reality is closer to 100. Time just doesn't affect a witcher's body in the same way. I mean, just look at Henry Cavill. The most accepted general theory for why we age is that over time, the body just builds up damage. Cellular repair mechanisms fail. Mutations, harmful ones, accumulate. And organs and cellular structures, proteins, all that stuff just changes enough to cause the general condition known as not being alive anymore. Aging is very complicated, but there might be a number of ways a witcher could theoretically extend their lifespan Wind's howling. I'm sorry, I, I have to say that every few minutes. A witcher could be changed in a number of ways to increase longevity, but I want to focus on just one way that mutated genes and cells might help with. This is a dot diagram of elemental oxygen. And notice that instead of the normal eight electrons in its outermost shell, this only has seven. Do you know what that makes it? You've heard the term before. This is a free radical. Atoms and molecules missing an electron, especially oxygen, become electron hungry. In the presence of other electrons, say on other atoms and molecules, they can rip 
these electrons away to become whole again. This, when it goes unchecked in something like a body, can change how those atoms and molecules interact with the body, causing that accumulating damage, that aging, disease, and eventually death. Here's what I'm suggesting. Geralt and other witchers through mutagens have an increased resistance to this oxidative stress within the body, which could theoretically increase their lifespan. In fact, this increased resistance has been linked in our world in a number of studies to increased lifespan. It wouldn't make Geralt immortal, but it could make him as vivacious as Vesemir for decades, centuries even. But not like Vesemir though, because he snapped his neck, he's dead. So how do you make a witcher for real? Well, the canon here I think is more or less correct. You would want to exact pressure on Geralt's genetics to theoretically increase his stamina and lifespan and get them all ripped, though more radical changes would be necessary for something like cat eyes. The witcher may be full of monsters and magic, but in real life, if Geralt was a true professional, it would be because science. See you in like three days or whatever. There's one more Witcher aspect that we didn't touch on, and that's sterility. Witchers are also sterile, and I don't know if they do this on purpose to Witchers or it's just a side effect. I'm not, I don't know all of the lore, but it has some ethical implications. If you make something that is genetically modified sterile, it cannot pass on those genes to other generations, to its offspring. And so this could be a way for witchers to make sure that they're the only ones who have to go through life with all of these mutations because they cannot pass them on. And this is a real concern in bioethics. If we alter people down at the genetic level, they could pass on those genetics to people people who didn't choose to be altered in that way. So this sterility is actually a very interesting bioethical conundrum. And again, you find it in hard fantasy. I love that. I also like the hairdo.